singing sad. The Irish used to crush their victims beneath waves. The Norwegians would stave in their skulls. The Gauls broke their backs. The Celts drove a saber through their breastbones. The Sembri disemboweled them, or else roasted them in furnaces. The Roman emperors used to enjoy watching young Christian virgins being whipped. Having their buds and buttocks tweaked with red hot pincers into their wounds, boiling oil or pitch would be pulled, and the same liquid squirted into all the orifices of their bodies. They themselves would sometimes play a torture, and the martyrdoms then became a great deal crueler. The Syrians flung their victims off mountain tops. The Mastier clubbed his to death and was particularly warm to fasten on the pool, exhibiting a preference nature always inspires. The blacks of the river Calabar district deliver up small children to birds of prey, which devour their flesh. In all this vast crowd of peoples covering our globe, only one is to be found that has ever attached the slightest importance to human life. Into the Urethral Canal, the Americans insert a twig covered with little thorns, which they twirl in one direction, then in the other, spinning it between their thorns and keeping at it for a considerable length of time to the appalling distress of the victim. The Iroquois affix the ends of their victim's nerves to sticks and by rotating these wind out the nerves like strain. In the course of the operation the body twitches, bends, and is dislocated in an odd manner which the torturer finds very exciting to watch. In the Philippines, a guilty woman is tied naked to a stake and facing the sun. It kills her in time. In Judea, the belly is cut open, the entrails removed, the cavity stuffed with salt, the body hung out on a pole in the marketplace. The koyas hurl javelins at the back, the body is then cut in two quarters, and the dead man's wife is forced to eat The Hurons suspend a cadaver above the patient 
In such wise that all the fills that spills from this dead body may splash upon his face. The fierce Cossacks of Usk tied a patient to the tail of a horse which is then ridden at a gallop of a rough terrain. The ancient Russians, in pulled through the flanks and hooked by the ribs, our Turkish contemporaries placed the skewer fundamentally. In Morocco, in Switzerland, the guilty one is clamped between planks and sawed in two. Hippotamus, the African king, had his son and daughter devoured by horses that had been deprived of food for a long time. Their victims were the first get five years in prison by the Gauls, who then impaled and burned them. The Germans smothered their victims in a merciless. The Egyptians inserted sharpened reeds into every part of the body, then set them afire. The Persians lay their victim in a and inverted another over him, so that he was sealed between these two halves of a hollow sphere, except that his hands, feet, and head remained outside, passing through slaws. He was forced to eat and drink in this situation, were he to refuse, his eyes were pricked with pointed instruments. Honey was sometimes daubed on his face so as to attract wasps. Worms ate him alive. Who would believe it? Victims sometimes endured eighteen days of this treatment. What sublime science and what art for heart consist in causing a little dying every day for as many days as possible. The Persians used also to grind between millstones or would flay alive and with green thorns rub the skin body, which causes unheard of suffering. The Babylonian cast unfortunate into hot ovens. The Macedonians crucified head downwards. The Athenians administered toxic brews, drowned in a bathtub after having slid the veins. The Romans 
occasionally hung by the virile privates from a tree. The torture of the wheel was passed on to us by the Romans. With them, an ordinary method of quartering was to bend down the crests of false clapings till they touched the ground to attach the victim's forelimbs each to one of these treetops and then to let them all fly back upright at the same time. Under the emperors they flogged to death or placed the victim in a leather bag along with serpents and toads and tossed the bag into the Tiber. At other times he was trapped to the rim of a great wheel which would be spun very swiftly for a while then suddenly made to turn in the opposite direction which loosened the victim inwardly and often caused him to vomit his very bowels.